ultimate sound. This out-of-body experience and virtual reality experience happened in 2014. And I was going to do a video on uh, this other experience that I had recently, but I uh, accidentally deleted the template, apparently. Dang it, I'm going to have to redo that damn template. So I thought, well, I already knew I did this template, so I'll just... I did this template a while ago, so I figured I'll just do this video from 2014 this experience but um so yeah it's really weird I went outside at 430 dang it I wish I would have went out there a little earlier because it's 53 degrees today it's probably colder now but it's 53 and really windy and um and yesterday I saw Cesar poop over there and so today I uh, went out at 4.30 to take my cats out, and I was going to go ahead and clean it up. And then I looked over about a foot and a half to the right of the poo-poo, and there was a little baby box turtle just sitting there. And so that's kind of weird, but I don't know. I mean, it obviously hatched out recently, like today or yesterday or something. Um, the thing is tiny, a lot smaller than... Um, Reptilia when I found her So yeah, I mean it's I think it's still alive. I mean it's not really moving much right now, but I think um, Maybe he'll start moving around tomorrow. I think he's just sleeping because he's cold or something um, you know because he was out there at 53 degrees and Out in the open like that. So I, I guess he's just I hope that won't kill the little feller being out there at 53 degrees. You know, he came out of hibernation. I mean, came out of his egg when it was kind of cold outside. So I don't know. So, yeah. So I guess the cold temperature just sort of startled him. So anyway, he, he appears to be alive. Um. Yeah. So he was like penis fanning. And then I noticed he sucked it back in. So he's definitely alive, he just seems like he's sleeping. So I hope he doesn't end up dying or something, because it was so cold out there, you know. I think he'll be okay, but, um, like I say, I think he's just, I think he's just sleeping right now. And he should be warm now, in the 40-gallon tank. But he seems to be, um, he's a hybrid, he's a three-toed ornate box turtle hybrid, so apparently they are compatible, because or Ortego bred with Carmela many times, and this little baby box turtle has four toes on the back. The three-toed box turtles only have three toes, so this is, when I first saw its shell, I was like, that looks like an ornate box turtle, so it's a hybrid, 
But yeah, I don't know if the little feller's gonna die or what, but hopefully it'll make it. I, I'm pretty sure it's alive. It's just startled and sleeping because it was sitting out there at 53 degrees and it was super windy too. So the wind chill was probably colder than 53 degrees. Yeah, so th that's really weird. Um, uh, of course, Reptilia, we found her around May, uh, or I didn't find her, Cesar found her around May 9th, um, two, let's see, will this be two years or three years? Um, two years, she'll be two years old, um, this May, I think, either two years or three years, I think two years old, yeah, so this May she'll be two years old, I'll go check to make sure, because I don't think she's almost three, she's almost two years old. But she must, must have hatched out around February or something like that. And then we found her like May 9th, um, Cesar did. But this box turtle that I just found, I found him just sitting there, right there by the poo poo that I was about to clean up. I mean, he was just sitting there. I mean, it's so weird. And it's obvious he's a boy. I mean, his tail is really long. And he was sticking his little donkey out. And, um, cause, probably because he's kind of scared and cold. And then he sucked it back in. So, yeah, he's definitely alive, but I hope he's not, like, dying or something. He's definitely alive. Right now, anyway, I think he's just sleeping and startled because he just hatched out in the cold weather so yeah so this is really weird I hope he lives okay so anyway this um, experience happened in 2014 and this was like complete virtual reality experience 100% virtual reality and out-of-body experience but um I don't think it was Joel that gave me this experience. This was a different reptilian. So anyway, um, it started out, This I knew this woman from somewhere. I'm not going to say where exactly, but I knew who this woman, you know, was. And I knew what she looked like and everything, but I never met her in person. And um, I knew that she was from Oklahoma or lived in Oklahoma or whatever. I knew that. And, um, and I knew she was married and everything. And so anyway, it was like I was visiting her house in Oklahoma. And, um, I was visiting her house in Oklahoma. And for some reason, the husband was like gone, like on a business trip or something. So anyway, um, this experience, um, it started where the reptilian just, boom, placed me in this virtual reality sitting in the house. But at first, I was in this big, of the house, I was in her house, but I was in, it started off me walking through this huge bathroom. But it was like, it wasn't really a bathroom, it was more like a big, huge, long, rectangle bedroom. But it was the bathroom. And, um, see... Huge rectangle bathroom. It was the bathroom, except it was more like a bedroom, a big long rectangle bedroom. So he places me in this, in the house, but I'm in this huge rectangle bathroom, and I started walking through the bathroom, and um, and then I was walking like from right to left, and then I was in the kitchen area. And um, I saw like three or four men standing there in the kitchen area. And it's like they were helping this woman that I know, this woman that I was about to get it on with in the scenario. They were like helping her make her really lavish pottery. I mean, this was like very beautiful glass pottery. I mean, it was like beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, whether or not she really does that in real life, I don't know, but it's possible. See, it's possible that she does actually do that in real life. And the reptilians knew that. 
but I have no way of knowing if it's true unless I actually talk to her. But, um, yeah, so, um, another thing the reptilians did one time, they gave me this virtual reality, uh, scenario at the bookstore. It's probably Joel, because that's his style, because he's a pervert. And this one guy that comes into the bookstore all the time, he's kind of skinny. He's a regular. He comes in there almost every night. And, um, it's like the reptilian, it's like the reptilian was telling me that he had a scar on his dong. And that's very possible, you know what I mean? That I doubt the reptilian would be lying about that. So he actually, like, showed me his dong and everything and showed me um, the scar. And it was a pretty significant scar. I mean, it was, like, as big as about a, a, uh, a nickel. And it was, like, total, like, like virtual reality type of, you know, s scenario in this bookstore with that, you know, skinny guy that comes in there all the time. So anyway, that's just kind of funny. Like, who knows if that's really true or not, but why would the reptilian lie? Make, why would he make something up like that? I think, you know, the reptilian was just, you know, it's probably Joel, and he was just being a pervert, you know, and telling me that information about that man. Okay, so anyway, um, so it could be true that this woman in real life, that she really does make, you know, some kind of pottery. Whether it was that beautiful in the scenario, oh my god, yeah, the aliens, they have a way of making things totally, like, lavish and beautiful. I mean, it was on the par of about this right here, but I would say it was probably even more beautiful than that, that pottery. And so it was like she had three or four men standing there in the kitchen, except they weren't chefs, they were helpers of, you know, making her pottery. They helped her make it make her pottery. And um, so then after th that, this, this scenario wasn't just too terribly long or anything. So after that, um, I, um, I walk, what do you call it? I walk, well, we'll pretend like the kitchen was north. So then I started walking south. And there was a big uh, bed a big bedroom um, that just kind of connected with the kitchen. There was a big bed on the east wall. Um, okay, so the kitchen was north. I started walking south. And then east, the big bed, I would say it was a either a queen bed or a king bed. It was um, up against the um, east wall. And she was already laying in the bed. And like I said, I was about to get it on with her, you know. Oh, whoops, damn it. And, um, um, so she was laying in the bed, and then I started laying in the bed, and we were talking and stuff, and she said that, um, you know, s s she said her husband was, like, out of town or whatever, and, um, so the husband wasn't in the house or anything, it was just me and, and her. Now, those other guys that were in the kitchen, they had nothing to do with, you know, it's not like they were sitting there staring at us once I got into the bed with this woman or anything. You know what I mean? So anyway, at that point, I felt alone with her, right, in the bed. And um, and so, you know, like I knew that she, you know, like, like we were in. I mean, I was totally in Oklahoma. I, it felt like Oklahoma. I mean, I was totally in Oklahoma. And she actually lives in um, Tulsa, I think. Tulsa, or outside of Tulsa, or whatever, and so anyway, so I was about to get it on with her, and, um, and I'm sure she said some other things that I don't remember, but anyway, ba and this is kind of funny, I wonder if she really lives on a street called Cypress Street, like, I don't know, but anyway, so, um, so then, right as we were about to get it on, the male reptilian, because the male reptilian, he concocted this whole thing. And I don't believe it was Joel. I, th I think it was a different reptilian. Because I know Joel's style, and this wasn't Joel's style. So um, the reptilian, after we was about to get it on, um, the, uh, the reptilian, it, it, it felt like he was in the bed with me at that point. Like he was laying in the bed with me. And um, so we were about to get it on. And then he, t he started, 
he said, he, he started talking in my right ear. And, and he's like, he said in a really, really, really demonic voice. Um, he's like, well, 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 you did know I lived on um, uh, 1312 Cypress Street. But he said it in like a really, really demonic voice. Uh, which, that's kind of funny. I mean, that had nothing to do with that, you know, we were about to get it on. What street she lived on had nothing to do with it. You know, but, you know, the aliens, they're just kind of, you know, they, they don't make sense sometimes. But I'm trying to um, imitate his voice. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so like I said, we were about to get it on. The reptilian butted in and started talking to my left ear and was like, you know, you didn't know that I lived on uh, like 1312 Cypress Street. But he said it in a very demonic voice. And then, um, so that led me to believe that he was about to do something mean or something, you know, because the aliens have done this before where I keep thinking that maybe they were about to do something mean. And lo and behold, the alarm clock goes off and jars me awake. Like, I don't know if the alien times it like that on purpose or, you know, or if it's just coincidental or whatever. But it's like, you know, like, was, you know, I was all excited and stuff and we were about to get it on and then the reptilian, it's almost like he's just laying there in bed with me and he started talking in my ear like that. It was very creepy. It was very scary and very creepy. But he probably wasn't going to do anything mean. He maybe timed it that way on purpose and then like I said after he started talking after he said that demonically about the you didn't know I lived on 1312 Cypress Street uh the alarm clock just bam woke me up and it was about 5 50 a.m. or something like that um actually it shouldn't have went off at 5 50 though it may have been more like 6 50 um actually you know what yeah no you know what it probably was 5.50 because I probably would. Oh, yeah, yeah, because I was probably working. I had to be at work at 7 o'clock back then. So that was right. So it went off at 5.50 and it jarred me out of the experience. And that's happened before where the reptilian, like, where I kept thinking he was about to do something mean and then boom, that, that's happened before. The alarm woke me up and jarred me out of the experience. So I don't know. I don't know if the alien coincided it with that on purpose or what, but... Yeah, I wonder if she really lives on a street called Cypress Street. But, um, but yeah, it was kind of cool, that pottery and everything that she was making in the kitchen, you know. And who knows if she really does make that in real life. But anyway, this was a fun experience. It was kind of quick, but it was fun. And, um, and like I say, uh, Th that memory came back, the name of the street, the Cypress Street. I can't remember if those were the exact numbers, but I did actually write it down a long time ago. I did write the story down, but there's no way I, I could go back and find it. But that memory came back that it actually was Cypress Street. It's just I can't remember if the numbers were 1312, but I know it was pretty similar. But anyway, that was my experience. Yeah, sometimes the aliens, they'll, like, groom you and stuff, and they'll, like, oh, my God, they, they try to, well, it's kind of funny, because they try to groom me to be, be with a black man or black woman, and they gave me, like, seven or eight consecutive, like, virt virtual reality type of experiences with black people. They've done that before. I mean, when they groom you, they'll do things consecutively, morning after morning after morning after morning after morning, and they also did that with lesbians and stuff, morning after morning after morning after morning, just to be funny, you know, but I have no desire to ever date anybody or anything, but, um, but yeah, I, I think it's a blast, these beings are a blast, man, okay, well, thanks for listening, that was my quick experience about, I was about to get it on with Hot Woman and the reptilian butted in, and, and uh, I got popped out of the experience. But yeah, I think they're teasers sometimes, and they do that on purpose. Thanks for listening.